Thank you for joining us for the quick tips, practical management of venous thromboembolism, the initial manager. My name is Craig Beavers. I'm an adjunct assistant professor with the University of Kentucky College of Pharmacy. The learning objective for this particular quick tip is the ability to select the best anticoagulant for initial management of acute venous thromboembolism, including optimal drug dose and duration. And I have nothing disclosed related to this presentation. As a guide to this initial management overview, there are three key things to think about when you're selecting your anticoagulant agent, understanding the phase of care, knowing your options, and considering the four Ps. The phases of venothromboembolism management are initiation, treatment, and extend in the extended phase. During this quick tip, we'll focus on the initial and early treatment phases, and that includes from diagnosis of five to 21 days, and then from the end initiation phase to three months. In the initial phase, the approved or FDA approved anticoagulant options include unfractionated heparin, low microwave heparin, fondaparinox, and the direct oral anticoagulants. And in some capacities, you may use one agent to start and bridge to another therapy or has a crossover to another therapy. Just looking on high level, and as you may have seen in other modules of this uh, educational activity, the general guideline recommendations for initial treatment phase includes using parental and subcutaneous agents, as outlined in CHESS in the American Society of Hematology. And if you look specifically at CHESS in patients with BT in terms of the CHESS guidelines, they recommend apixaban, dabigatran, adoxaban, or rivaroxaban over vitamin K antagonist as the treatment phase. And as we've alluded, and you may be aware, if you use dabigatran or adoxaban, you have to start a period of that phase with a subcutaneous or intravenous anticoagulant. ASH suggest, the ASCA, ASH guidelines suggest using DOAX over VKA, and this recommendation does not apply to any particular subgroups. So when you get to really getting down to the anticoagulant selection, you want to think of the four Ps. That's the patient's presentation, the patient characteristics, the pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and patient adherence. You have to take in the patient's presentation, including the hemodynamic stability or instability, the procedure, and the VTE type. For example, if a patient is unstable, unfractionated heparin might be the better option given the variability that could be occurring uh, in the variety of different mechanisms. Uh, either the renal function could be changing or they could be having liver congestion, which all would impact other agents. If they truly have acute renal failure, heparin might be a better option, again, because heparin is not dependent upon renal clearance. Or if you anticipate a procedure or there's risk of bleeding, unfractionated heparin might be the option due to the reversibility. Other things that you want to consider patient characteristics, as you're thinking about not just the initial phase, but transitioning out of that initial phase. So is the DVT, for example, related to cancer? And in that particular instance, depending on the type of cancer and where it's located, you could probably consider use of a direct acting oral anticoagulant. If you're talking about dyspepsia or GI bleeding, you may want to use a Pixaban or VKA or as your priority agent, whereas we know Rivaroxaban and Dabigatran can increase the risk of bleeding and causing issues. When it comes to antiphospholipid syndrome, for example, VKAs might be the preferred agent. And we all know now, based on some updated evidence from ISHLT, that DOAX can be used safely in obesity. You also want to consider pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, and those are looking at your drug-drug, food, and herbal interactions. For example, with the DOAX, CYP3A4 agent inhibitors or inducers can impact those particular agents. And we all know, historically, warfarin has all sorts of food and drug interactions. You also want to consider how the renal function is basing and adjusting uh, the dosing based on the renal clearance. You want to evaluate the patient's bleeding risk and if they're on other agents that can compound their bleeding risk, such as uh, being on an antiplatelet agent. You want to consider their absorption. Are they going to have any issues? Are they on tube feeds? Are they going to have issues absorbing from that particular standpoint? Have they had uh, some form of surgery that may uh, limit their absorption? And you most certainly want to look at their liver dysfunction. And finally, the last P that you want to look at is patient adherence. And really considering agents based on what the patient might want to do. If a 
they prefer one's daily therapy, you can consider the warfarin or doxaban. If they want to avoid injections, you can use a pixaban or rivaroxaban. If you're worried about monitoring or adherence checks, warfarin is the ideal agent because we have the INR. And then dosing uh, without worrying about mills, you can see a pixaban, dibigatran, and warfarin are the agents of choice. So really just kind of considering those factors. So in conclusions, guidelines recommend DOAX as a general agent of choice for initial VTE management. However, the four Ps should really guide your selection, and that should be the patient presentation, characteristics, pharmacodynamics, pharmacodynamics, and patient adherence. Thank you so much.